Welcome to part two in our series on story reports. So in part one, we uh, uh, looked at tables and how they interrelate with one another in queries. Um, in part two, we're going to take this a step further and we're going to start adding fields and filters to our uh, query so that we can build a report out of it. So let's get going. Okay, welcome to my second video that I've created on story reports. In the first video, I went through and showed you how the the tables in the in a story report query fit together. In this video, I'm going to focus my time on the work involved in order to do the basics of building a query. So adding the fields to the query and then of course adding filters and things like that. So without further ado, let me dive right in. I'm going to create a story report and I am going to just start out here as as I mentioned in the last video, for most reports, you're probably just gonna to wanna to start, at least if you are watching this from an EC perspective, you're gonna probably start with job information. So I'm just gonna drop that on here. And then I'm going to just drop in personal information so that we have all of the name fields right there available to us. And now, once that gets assigned, again, success factors makes it really easy because it's going to do all the joins and everything for you. But now you've got these two field, I mean, these two tables working together for your report. So now in order to add fields to your query, what you do is you're going to just go into whatever table you need to pull the fields from. In this case, I'm just going to pull from job information and I am going to grab a few fields that, that I want to show on my report. So I'm just going to select, let's go with business unit and then I'm going to pick a couple more fields. Let's go with location. Let me find that one down here. I'm going to add the job title as well and then the location. Da, 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 da. If I will actually use the alphabet and let's see, just a couple more fields in here. I'm going to, let's go ahead and select the uh, position title. So again, you'll notice that I'm, I'm selecting from drop down. So if you have a field that has some, you know, have multiple fields, like you could have an ID or a, or a title. I'm just, you can decide whether to select the code or the title. As a matter of fact, I'll just add the position number in as well so that you can see that. But again, you just select whatever fields you need for here. Those of you that are watching closely would also note that for employment information, excuse me, for, for this job information table, even though it, it technically speaking, job information is just job information, success factors has merged in in the employment details in here as well. So those are mushed in here as well. So that you, that's why you can see here, like hire date, is contingent worker, things that you would notice from employment details. Those are all just merged in and it just keeps things simpler rather than having to select two tables for things like that. So I think that's a pretty good move. Okay, so I have added a few fields from job information. Now, next thing I'll do is I'll just add a few fields from personal information. And I'm going to just do that here. I'm just gonna add last name. I will add preferred name. And again, as I've discussed last time, you could also make a make the argument that you should use the user table rather than the personal information table because the first name and last name on the user table may be permission to someone and personal information may not. But just for the for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna show personal information just so you can see you know, a richer array of fields. But I'm just gonna add first name and last name. I'm also going to add person ID. ID external, which is you know your primary ID from a success factors standpoint. That's that's visible. You know it's visible also on your you know biographical information and things like that. So I'm just going to add that field in as well. So now I've added a few fields in here. So first thing I'm going to show you is just that these fields are readily available. I can I can click in here and then you can see here this is a column overview. This is a really nice feature so that you can just see what all fields are in your whatever your uh, query is. So you can see the the fields here. I can also add in calculated columns. So for example, if I wanted to calculate 
calculate annual salary and include that in the in the report as well i could do that on the calculated columns and then we can add dimensions and measures which we'll we'll talk about in a, in a future video but for now you can see here that we've just got some a few fields that we have listed here and you know if i wanted to delete a field or something like that i could easily do that so i'm just going to click ok there and next i'm going to add in a couple of filters on the report so in to add filters there are three places or there's really there's two places i can do it I, one i can do it directly on the tables themselves and you see here these are these little filters that i have on here so i can do it here i can also use this overall query this this filter right here but there's some limitations of, uh, on that one and I'll talk about here in a minute but for now just for simplicity sake I'm just going to add in a couple of filters and they're both going to be on the job information side so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select location and I'm just going to select location all right let's see here why is it I did choose simple filter, right? Okay, actually I had to pause for a moment because there's a little bit of a quirk in the way that the queries work. And I remember seeing this before, for some reason it didn't hit my head quick enough to, to include this in the video before I started stumbling around. But I, this is a very important point to make probably because it'll confuse other people as well. At least at the moment, right now, if I go to, you know, whatever the, the type of filter is, if I do a search, watch this. So if I do a search and then I, hit the drop down, it's not going to find what I'm looking for underneath. But if I do a, if I scroll down and I look for the exact same thing, which is location, and I select from here, you'll notice that the field does appear. So I, I guess the moral of the story is there. Yeah, you probably want to look and just scroll down and find whatever field you're looking for if there is a subsection that you are pulling from. So back to what we were talking about, which was the filters themselves. I'm going to select the code. And from here, I am going to select a specific location. So I'm going to select, in, in my case, I'm going to select US 28. So US 28 and click OK. And then the other field filter that I'm going to put in place is, a sim is also a simple filter. You'll see here the code is already listed. I'm going to add another one, and that is I'm going to do employment status. So for this one, it actually employment status okay so for this one because it doesn't have a subsection i can actually do a search and find it but what i want is by default it's going to give you all employees in in whatever status they are in but in in our case we just want the people that aren't terminated so i'm going to select active paid leave and unpaid leave so that way i'm, I'm also I, I don't want to just pick up actives because in this case maybe i want to keep track of the people that are in a given location but are just out on leave so i'm just going to click and click ok on that and so now we're going to stop down and just see how this looks so far and i'm going to click on preview query so if i click on preview you will see here that it's going to come back and it's going to let me know the output that I would be generating based on what I've entered for this for this query. So when this comes back, you'll see just all of the fields that we have selected and it's going to be filtered down. Oh, the other now the next thing you can see here is we can set the variable. And so from here, you can see I've, I've got a prompt and I can decide what effective date I want to run this report for. So by default, it's just going to select today's date. So I'm going to leave that. And then you're going to see the output, which will be the fields for the employees in US 28 that are that are active or on for the employees that are active or on leave.
So yeah, here we go. So you can see here, I've got last name. I've kind of got these things kind of mixed up and I've got last name, preferred name. I've, I've kind of jumbled around the way that I put these out. But of course, this is not the what we're using for output anyway. This is just the query. And what we're going to talk about next time is taking this query and making a simple report out of it, which we will go back to the story level in order to do that next. But for now, you can see here that I've got the last name, first name, I've got these some filters in place and, and things like that. All right, so that is the query designer. So just one or two other things I wanted to show you. You know, that's kind of the core of what you're going to be doing 90% of the time, which is I want to just add some fields and I want to add a couple of filters and then I can go from there. But if you want to do more, as I mentioned before, already, there's calculated, there's calculated columns, but there's also the ability to create advanced filters. So you can see here there's scope filtering, which we'll, we can talk about later. But for now, I just want to show you this advanced filtering, which allows me to, you know, or, you know, some different conditions in here. So, you know, if I want to add in some logic, I can do that here. I can select, you know, for underneath job information, you can see here, I can select different fields. And one thing that I wanted to note here is that the list of fields that are available for advanced conditions is a little bit more limited. So for example, if there is, if it's an MDF field or a foundation object field that you're wanting to choose, those are not available for advanced filtering, at least as of the uh, the recording of this video. I also have that I have like employee class, which is a pick list, employment status, which is a pick list. But if I look for say, locate, let's look for like business unit is missing, location is not here. So you, you know, this is a little bit more limited in what you can do. But you know, if you want to add in a couple of different conditions through this, you can do that. And then, you know, one thing I'll note here is like, let me show you here. I could add job type equal to, and then you'll notice that I could see where it says select filter type. I can do free text where I can just put in like, you know, job title is, you know, includes mechanic or something like that. Member selector, where I can just select from a checkbox. The other thing that's interesting here is this input parameter. So it, what this allows me to do is, and I don't have one set up at the moment, but if the, this right here is where I could, where I can create an input parameter. And if I create an input parameter, then that input parameter would be available when I go to create the advanced filter. So that is, that, that is how that works. Now, the last thing I'll show you is here on the, on the, I'll show the, the scope filtering. And you can see this, this one is, it's pretty limited in how we would use it inside of Employee Central. This is where you can use all of your, um, you can use your job relationships to filter down so that you can run this for just like, if you want to roll this out for your managers, then they would be able to run this for only the people that report to them. And so that's, that's a, that's a handy feature. You know, if you have job relationships set up where you have matrix managers and things like that, that's where the scope filtering can come into play. I, you know, just like on some of this, the standard table reports where the scope filtering is also available. I, I, in employee central, we typically don't use that because we can rely on on this, the just the normal everyday security in order to allow us to limit down what what people can see. So anyway, so all right, so that is kind of a, the basics of getting around, adding fields, and add, adding some filters. So we will build on that next time by showing how we can run a, a you know how we can build out a story based on this query.